throughout history. Mankind has reported on all sorts of strange occurrences, witches, werewolves, vampires, UFOs, ghosts, angels, and demons. Are these all just urban legends, stories, or myths? Or is there some form of truth that lurks in the shadows? Together, we endeavour to explore and investigate these strange occurrences which have taken place throughout mankind's history. Together, we are ETFW. Welcome to the library. Portland is known as one of America's most livable cities, but just 150 years ago, it was infamously known as one of the most dangerous. Not often does the term criminal underground have a literal sense, and not everyone who walks the bustling streets knows of the horrors that happened just six feet below the very ground they walk on. I speak of the Shanghai Tunnels. The Shanghai Tunnels earned their name for what they were used for, Shanghaiing. Shanghaiing, also known as crimping, is the practice of kidnapping people to serve as sailors or other roles about ships by coercive techniques such as trickery, intimidation, and even violence. Those engaged in this form of kidnapping were often known as crimps. At one time, Portland was a simple port town located on the Willamette River and would have many vessels arriving and departing on a daily basis. A lot of these vessels, when arriving, would be in need of additional crew aboard their ships and the captains would pay handsomely for anyone they could get. Those who unseemingly stopped for a drink in the saloons throughout the town became unsuspecting victims of the intricate criminal world in Portland. They would often find themselves beneath the streets in tunnels, being carried out to the waterfront and sold for blood money. Portland earned the reputation of being the Shanghai capital of the world because of the uncontrolled Shanghaiing of unsuspecting men and women. The men would usually be sold as sailors, loggers, and those that worked on the river. Thousands of them found themselves in the clutches of Shanghaiers and crimps, who either forcibly grabbed them off the streets or slipped knockout drops in their drinks. They were hauled out of opium dens and houses of prostitution, or dropped through trap doors that were conveniently located in the majority of establishments. Women in the early Portland's history also needed to be cautious when venturing into certain areas of the city. They were warned not to go to dances and to stay out of restaurants, saloons, and other establishments of the evening. They also became victims of this shadowy part of the city's history and found themselves being carried or dragged through this infamous network of underground tunnels and unfortunately sold into slavery. The victims were often held captive in small brick cells or makeshift wood and tin holdings until they were sold to sea captains. A sea captain who needed additional men to fill his crew notified the Shanghais that he was ready to set sail in the early morning hours and would purchase the men for $50 to $55 a head. Knockout drops were then slipped into the confined victim's food or water. Unconscious, they were then taken through a network of tunnels that snaked their way under the city all the way to the waterfront. They were placed aboard ships and didn't wake until many hours later after they had crossed into the Pacific Ocean. It took many of these men as long as six years to get back to Portland and, and many more would never see home again. All along the Portland waterfront, from the north to the south, Shanghai tunnels run beneath the city, allowing a hidden world to exist. These catacombs connected to many of the saloons, brothels, gambling parlors, and opium dens, which drew great numbers of men and became ideal places for the Shanghaiers to find their victims. The catacombs, which wove their way beneath the city streets, helped to create an infamous history that became cloaked in myth, superstition, and fear. With the cooperation of police, politicians, and big business leaders, these riverfront neighborhoods became more notorious than the Barbary Coast. It is said that during the peak of Shanghai, that a minimum of 1,500 people were shanghai out of Portland per year. It will come as no surprise to hear that the Shanghai Tunnels are reportedly one of the most haunted places on the planet. Deep within the tunnels, People have reported feeling chills, as if someone is breathing down their neck. Many people have also reported seeing an Asian man walking past them in the tunnels. He is known as Sam, and apparently he is responsible for turning off the lights in bar basements. Sam also likes to move things around the tunnels as explorers walk by. One tour guide reported hearing a voice calling out the name Sam over and over again echoing throughout the tunnels. There are other reports seeing quick movements of shadows and feeling ghostly fingers on their shoulders when no one else is around. 
Most visitors say that Sam is a rather friendly spirit. However, other spirits which lurk in the tunnel are known as tricksters. They will often pull at your shirt or gently tug at the ends of your hair. One person who visited the tunnels even claims that her leg was grabbed by something and wouldn't let go, resulting in her falling over. Some people say they feel unwelcomed while in the tunnels, as if their presence isn't wanted, or maybe they're being warned away. One man remembers hearing the sound of whistling just before he was pushed to the ground. After getting back up, he turned to see who had knocked him down. Lifting his torch, he saw that no one was behind him. One of the most eerie stories that we have read, however, was of a group who heard a woman screaming, echoing through the tunnels, while also hearing the sound of what seemed to be shoes dragging across the floor as if she was being pulled through the tunnel. They continued to hear this until they eventually grew louder and louder before a gust of wind hit them and they heard the unmistakable noise of a woman yelling, get out. Naturally, the Shanghai tunnels are an eerie place where, if you're not too careful, you may get yourself lost in the underground maze. What do you believe of the Shanghai Tunnels? Would you be brave enough to visit? If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new here and comment your thoughts down below. Until next time, we are ETFW.